All right, let's get started here with 6.5, Properties of Logarithms. And so our first objective, we're going to work with the properties of logarithms to rearrange them and rewrite them. So first couple properties here, let's prove that log base a of 1 equals 0. And we could do this by rewriting this. So this is a to the 0 equals 1. And we know that anything to the 0 power does equal 1. So we have proved that this is our very first property of logarithms. Log base a to 1 automatically is going to be 0. All right, same thing with the second property. If we rewrite it, we'd have base a to the first power. And anything to the first power is itself, which is what we're saying here. So second property of logarithms, log base a of a equals 1. And you've got them right there. There's going to be a number of properties. You're going to want to start creating a nice list of them. Here's the next two a to the log a of m equals m. All right, so if we rewrote that, we could say log base a of m equals the power, which is log base a of m, which works out. Same thing with the second one here. This would be a to the r equals a to the r. And so that one checks out as well. But what do we use them for? we're going to be able to use them to cancel things out. So in this case, 3 to the log 3 of 18 just equals 18. Okay, 3 and the log 3 cancel out. Now, you'd be tempted on part B to say that the answer here is negative 5. But we know that for logarithms, the parent function, remember that the domain is x has got to be greater than 0. Can you do the log of a negative number? No, so this is no solution. Can't be done. All right, how about this one? One half and one half are going to cancel out, and we're left with 20. And on this problem, they're going to actually cancel each other out because natural log is log base e of e cubed, and so we'll end up with 3. All right, take that information and see if you can do problem 9. Okay, a couple more properties for you here. So we've got the multiplying property, log a of mn, means that you get to separate into a plus, an addition problem, log base a of m plus log base a of n. Notice that the bases stay the same everywhere, a, a, a. All right, same thing here with division. Division turns into subtraction if we split them. And then this property is very helpful if we have log base a of m to the r. We can take that r out front right here and have r times log base a of m. All right, so knowing that, try problem 13. Second objective, write a logarithmic expression as a sum or difference of logarithms. So we're going to take those last two properties and put them to good use here. So this is a timesing problem, x squared times the cube root of x minus 1. So immediately I'm going to separate them. Log 2 of x squared plus log base 2 of the cube root of x minus 1, which I'm going to rewrite as 1 third. That's the cube root. Okay. Second step, these powers here I can bring in front. So I've got 2 log 2, sorry, log base 2 of x plus 1 third, I can take this 1 third out front, log base 2 of x minus 1. Now be careful here, this x minus 1 cannot be split up. You can only split up when it's the part multiplying inside not addition. Okay, so we're done here. This is the end. Let's try one more here using division. Log base 6 of x to the fourth. Now it's division, so I'm going to say minus log base 6, same base, of x squared plus 3 squared. And let's bring them out front. 4 log base 6 of x minus 2 log base 6 in parentheses x squared plus 3. And our job here is done. All right. Now let's try to put this all together here. A lot going on here. Natural log of x cubed times, so plus natural log of x minus 2 square root means 1 half. And then dividing minus natural log of x plus 1 squared. And then let's bring the powers in front. 3 natural log of x plus 1 half natural log of x minus 2 minus 2 natural log x plus 1. 
All right, try problem 45. Objective three. Now let's go the other direction. Let's take the split up multiple logs and put them all together. So I've got log and log, so I can put those two together. Before I do that, though, I'm going to bring these up here. So I'm going to rewrite this as natural log of 2 cubed plus natural log of x squared plus 2. Now these two I can put together. This 2 does not have a natural log with it, so I've got to leave it alone. So this is natural log of 8, 2 cubed is 8, times x squared, and then plus 2 on the end. What about this one? This is going to be log base a of 4 to the 1 half, which is square root of 4, minus log base a of 5 squared, which is 25. So that's going to equal log base a, square root of 4 is 2, over 25. Last one, let's put it all together here. Log base a of 3 to the negative 2 is 1 ninth, 1 over 3 squared, plus log base a 2 cubed is 8, minus log base a of x squared plus 1. This will become log base a of 8 ninths, all over x squared plus 1 which is log base a of 8 over 9 parentheses x squared plus 1. A lot going on there. All right, walk through those steps. Try problem 51. All right, so properties of logarithm, just one extra one to throw in there. If m equals n, then the log of the same base of m and n are going to be the same thing. And go in the other direction. If log a of m equals log a of n, then we know m and n are equal to each other. Doesn't come up a lot, but good to know. All right, let's bring this home. Objective 4, evaluate logarithms whose base is neither 10 nor e. We've got the change of base formula. We've done this before. Here it is again, let's use it. Here, log base 3 of 12 is going to be log base 10 of 12 over log base 10 of 3. Or you can use natural log of 12 over natural log of 3. You'll get the exact same answer no matter what. All right, so we could go ahead and plug that into our calculator. Go ahead and do that, you'll get the answer. Make sure you go to four decimal places. All right, so using change of base, how would we set it up? This is going to be log 35 over log 7. Or you could write natural log of root 2 over natural log of 1 third. Okay? And from using our formulas, you could, if you wanted to, write 1 half natural log of 2 for your numerator there. Because 2 to the 1 half, you could bring that 1 half out front. This would still be one-third in the denominator. All right, 17 and 65 are yours to try. Okay, last one to do, graph logarithmic functions whose base is neither 10 nor e. So let's graph this, y equals log base 5 of x. So we're going to rewrite this here. And so we're going to have 5 to the y equals x. First things first, let's get ourselves an asymptote. This one here, plus 0 in here. So our asymptote is still x equals 0. And let's make ourselves a table, get two nice points here. Best point to pick for y is 0, so that's 5 to the 0 is 1. And another good point for y would be 1. 5 to the first power is 5, so 1 comma 0. And 5 comma 1. We've got an asymptote. We've got two points. We can graph it. All right, try problem 73, and then you are done. Last slide here, you can put this up. This is all the formulas in one place. Make sure you've got them all on there. Start putting those in your brain and memorizing them, and that's it. Any questions, we'll go over them in class. Good luck.